I'm with Susie Leeper, uh, scribe on the project. Susie, can you tell me how you're feeling today after having seen the final volume and all that work that you've been involved with? I had lots of emotions this morning. I cried, and then I cried even more when Sally gave me a big hug and she was crying. I sat without my specs on and watched all those pages being turned, and I thought we all made such a fuss about each page and whether it was the right weight and everything, and it just looked when Donald turned the pages as if page after page they all looked the same from a distance. I mean, I know they wouldn't be if you were up close, but yeah. uh, there is a, a remarkable homogeneity about the writing that... I think the public will see. We will never quite see that. But no, because you've put your heart and yes, soul into yes, it. Yes, yes. And you've done so for a long time. Yes. Can you tell me what it was like when you first got that call from Donald saying, would you be part of this project? How, what did you think? What did you feel? Did you anticipate how it might turn out? I couldn't believe, for a start, that I was getting that call because I'm not trained formally as a calligrapher. I'd first suggested to Sally when I met her um, on a training scheme that maybe I could help with the proofreading of the Bible and then they decided that because I lived in Scotland that was too impractical so when I got a call asking to come first of all just to visit the scriptorium to see what it might be like I mean it wasn't come and be a scribe because that it was that visiting day was up to me then to say yes I'm prepared to go one step forward further and do the training then the training was extremely hard and tense so you, you had to go through the training process yes, before you we had, started? Yes, we were trained for five weeks. We did alternate weeks one, three and five here and weeks two and four at home with assignments to do when we went home. Mm. Um, so when you, when you started, when you began, mm. um, what, can you remember what went through your head? Did you sort of look at the vellum in front of you and take your pen and think, I felt oh sick God. from the moment I got up that morning because I knew because I hadn't started the day before when everybody else seemed to manage to start, I hadn't. And I knew I had to do it that morning and it was just awful. And I remember they're sitting, sitting there in front of this blank sheet of vellum, having decided I wouldn't start at the top of the column, I'd start halfway down. And there was this, this fear coming right up through the soles of my feet and my hands were shaking, my heart was going, Duh. and I was just kind of getting psyched up to start. And then Sally walked into the room and, said, and she looked at me and she said she didn't, retrospective she said she'd never seen me look so white in my life and then she just said shall I go away and I went yes please <laughs> so I wrote those first two lines and I think as I got to the end of the second line the fear subsided a little bit but you know I was just terrified and when I look back at those lines and not a single letter sits on the pencil line but in the in the whole page you know it's quite hard to find those lines so did that fear uh, ever ever get less as you progress? Yes, I think it did, especially once I got better and I would just pull out a page in the morning and I'd already written on it, so it was just a question of sort of picking up the quill and getting grinding ink and getting on with my job. So tell me what that process was like, because, you know, in anything where you're training yourself, because you were training yes. almost as you were going yes. along yes. and learning as you were yes. going along, what was that evolving process like for you mentally and physically? Um... The, the first few months were, or even more than a few months, maybe six months, were very frustrating. The, the quill cutting was hard, getting to know the vellum, just this fear always of not making mistakes or hitting, you know, getting it justified at the right hand side. Um, and then coming back to the scriptorium, and sometimes Donald would say nice things, and other times he would maybe not say things, and you just think, oh, I've not got any better. And it was, it was difficult, the most difficult thing I've ever done. And I, would, I wouldn't deny that. But Donald always said that, that all this disciplined writing, he thought, would probably give us the freedom to do anything we wanted once we were finished. And I, I think that always stayed in the back of my mind. And I thought, maybe if I just, you know, if I can stick this out, I'll, I'll suddenly take off. And it's been, that's been absolutely true. You know, I, when I was at the, in the first year or two of writing on the project, I had no creative energy to do anything else. I did hardly any of my own work. But once... I stopped writing. I just oh rushed off to the art school and did some classes, and I was started to paint, and I I I could write. Yeah, you know, people would say, "Can you do this?" And I could just do any style. Anything just came so quickly, and I found that just wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So it's opened. A oh, lot it's of opened every avenue to me and given me much more confidence, and it's just fantastic. Mm -hmm.